Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG. Here is another episode of Ask Dave. I received something from Ron Spooner. And uh, Ron, let's see if I can find his call sign in here. W6FIF. I received an email from Ron Spooner who talked about an antenna he'd been working on. It's a J-pole, just for two meters. But what he's messing with is the feed. The thing that bothered him was the fact that the feed is balanced. And the, um, whereas the coax, of course, is not. So he came up with an antenna design. And he sent it to me. And um, got lots of tape to get these things apart. But the, the interesting thing he was trying to do is a new feed mechanism for this. And the idea of the feed is that instead of feeding it like here and here, he's feeding it down at the bottom at the zero point and up here at a slightly different impedance point. And the reason for that is so that the feed down here is unbalanced. And this is the feed section of the J-pole. So let's go ahead and put the J-pole together, the rest of it. He does an absolutely gorgeous job here. Now he does not sell these per se, um, but he has some diagrams that you can use. Now we're going to use this as the, the mast piece. Okay, so this will screw on the bottom and then these screw on the top. Now he's got, let's see, this one, you gotta figure out which direction is correct on these things. Uh, Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is the top, so this is obviously the middle section, and it looks like it's got to be here. And you put this, these are gas fittings that he's put on here, or copper pipe fittings. So this has to go in here. We're going to go right up through the roof here. And he's, oh, the soldering work on here he's done is just magnificent okay and then this is the so-called mast it actually doesn't matter what the length of the mast is um, it just slides you know it doesn't slide in there's a well there is a screw hole there you can put something in that will hold that like that so here's your j-pole the fact that it wiggles a little bit. This is actually a flexible copper pipe that can be bent. Um, and the same with this right here. He's put the strength in down here. So this is the center feed point, And this is what is uh, supposed to, uh, to work. So I think what we should do is just take a look at the SWR of this one. It's got a little tuning thing you can do here, and it's got the same thing at the top to get it exactly where you want it. So, let's do that. Okay, so I'm holding it up behind me. And at 146.16, it's got an SWR 1.1. 144, about 1 1.6, 148, about 2.0. Okay, so now uh, I'll let you get a view of just what we're doing for testing here. I'm holding it up by the mast in the air. Now, the problem with putting it up right now, as you can see, there's snow all over the ground and we'd have to be on ladders and stuff, but I will uh, as we get more free of all this uh, cold weather. I'll put this up there and we will uh, see how well it works. But uh, it matches extremely well. So I think this is probably gonna be a great antenna on uh, two meters. 
Okay, one of the things I might recommend for this, this is copper tubing, like you might use in a refrigerator water supply. I think I would suggest that you put threaded connector, connections on here, because uh, this, although it fits in there, uh, what you can get, little fittings for this, that will provide a set of threads, and then for another piece of half-inch pipe, come down here and screw into that, and you can do the same thing here. And then this will be less likely to bend in the wind. We have had some pretty bad winds uh, this year. But I'd like to commend Ron, Rod Spooner on putting together a really nice antenna this um this feet point is, is not unique. Other people have tried it, but he has really made it work. And he's got some nice little pieces of pipe to hold the right dimensions between the things here. What he has done is um, use little black ties to kind of hold these things into place. And it's just a really neat antenna, and as we could see, the SWR was very nice. It's nice to see that for a two-meter antenna. Plus, the way this antenna is built, it is ultimately portable. Okay, this is another place you could put that uh, uh, screw-style thing, so that you can collapse this down to a nice little box, and uh, it would be quite portable, something that you could take with you for a POTA event, uh, parks on the air, something like that. This would work really well. I like the way it's fed because this is a zero point on the um, stub. This is a, a transmission line stub. It's quarter wavelength on two meters. So when this is shorted, this is open. Well, actually very high resistance. So what this does is it feeds this, which is a, a full-size dipole for two meters, except it's end-fed. Okay, it's fed by the end. Now you could also, if you wanted, feed it out this way, or put the thing like this. Or if you really wanted to get fancy, since this is a high impedance point right here, so is this one. And you could put another antenna out over here and extend that thing. You narrow the pattern a bit by doing that. Okay, so there are lots of things you can do with this basic antenna. This type of uh, quarter wave transmission line followed by a dipole was actually used upside down from the Zeppelin um, airship was like this and they'd feed it here and hang this thing down and they'd have a very nice vertical uh, there that was end fed and completely resonant and everything and that was one thing the Germans got right about their Hindenburg. The thing they got wrong of course was the helium or hydrogen. Now I like the way this box is built. I gotta point this out to you he has glued this block in so that it will protect this thing from getting squished. See? And so we just put the other parts in and we have an extremely portable J-pole that we've already tested uh, for SWR on the air and when the snow melts, if it ever melts, uh, we will uh, get uh, this thing on the air and test it. Okay, but I have very high hopes for it. Uh, I just would suggest those plumbing changes if you're going to make one like that. Uh, Joe was saying he's going to submit an article to QST. We'll see if it's uh, published, but this is different enough, unique enough, uh, and very, very portable that it could be done very well that way. So thank you very much, uh, Joe, for sending that in. And let me just see if I've got it. Uh, before we go, let's just add one thing. Uh, this is from Bo Wells, um, who sent to me a question. He was going to put up an HF9V out in the field on his ranch. And he was worried about keeping the cows out. And I told him, barbed wire fence. I mean, you're going to have to, because otherwise the cows will knock that antenna over in a heartbeat. And so I suggested some radials and then some barbed wire fence. And he just asked about a good distance 
that he would recommend between the ends of the radials and the barbed wire. And I'm going to say three feet uh, because some previous modeling I've done keeping the ends of dipoles away from metal masts, uh, it was about three feet, seemed to be about the magic point where you're not exciting the, uh, the barbed wire and stuff like that. So there you go on that one uh, for Bo. Uh, and he's WA5 TNI. Um, and I did a video, it's number 879 on it, and it's been public for a while, so something to look at. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and click like and share this video. Also, if you would like to help this channel thrive financially, go to decastlercom slash support and pick a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.